Break it out, fan it out. Yeah, yeah. Split it up. Hardly cut at all. Ninety percent case I'm bringing through. Hers is a story like no other. I'm ready to make my scratch pockets better. The small town Irish girl who conquered the world of boxing and with it changed the face of women's sport forever. The winner here tonight could possibly be the best female fighter in the world. Her killer instinct inspiring a whole new generation. I've felt since I was six or seven years of age I was born to box. Fighter, trailblazer and living legend. Katie's story begins in Bray, in Ireland, where she first fell in love with boxing. I've come to find out what drives her. Very Hi. good morning. Yeah, come on, Andy. <laughs> Katie How Taylor, are you? Yeah. How are you? undisputed lightweight champion of the world. I can never get old here now. <laughs> Sounds on, good, huh? It does sound good. Amazing. Yeah. Tell me, how did Katie get into all of this? Yeah, well, I think from, uh, she was always a very quiet mm. child. She was always very sporty. She was sporty mm. in school. So it wasn't kind of surprising to me that she actually got into boxing in mm. the end. It was in the family. Mm. Her brothers boxed, mm. our dad boxed as well. So it was a very kind of a natural progression for her. It was never going to be easy. Women's boxing wasn't sanctioned in Ireland at the time but a determined Katie wasn't going to let that get in the way. Her dad and would-be trainer, Peter, put her through her paces as a young kid. Katie pushed on, even pretending to be a boy to get some fights under her belt. I used to have the hair up my headgear and I used to be known just as Kay Taylor. Right. Um, <laughs> so, and then when I took the headgear off the, at the end of the fight and everyone realised I was a girl, there was uproar. It was a no-win situation for the lads, I think, in many ways, because, I mean, if you got in and beat them, you were, they were getting slagged. And if they beat you, she were only beating a girl. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was a lose-lose so, a yeah. situation yeah. for them, probably. At just 15 years old, Katie took the first step in what would be her historic journey. Here at the National Boxing Stadium in 2001, she took part in the first officially sanctioned female boxing fight in the history of Ireland. I just remember being so excited and actually getting my first official female fight and I don't think I realised how big the, the event actually was or the enormity of the, the whole event um, until I actually looked back on it to get ready for my first official female fight. It was a history-making fight. Yeah and uh, women's boxing hasn't looked back since. What do you actually remember about the fight itself? To be honest with you, I, I obviously you know, I won the fight, but I remember after the fight not boxing well, I, I was disappointed with, with my performance, but mm. I think even back then I was just, uh, I, I wanted to, to perform my best every single time, and mm. every time I don't perform so well, I, I come back in, into the dressing mm. room afterwards so disappointed, but um, the next day there was so much media coverage around the event, and. Mm. Uh, people were talking about them, about the fight, and um, it was amazing. Actually, since then, I, I really haven't looked back. Traveling the world, picking up amateur titles, Katie was making her mark as a boxer. All that remained was Olympic glory. But to get there, Katie had to confront convention once again. Women's boxing wasn't an Olympic event, so Katie had to fight to get it into the London 2012 Games. I remember uh, I getting invited to, to a competition in Chicago. I was boxing um, in, in front of the Olympic Committee and uh, they, they told me before that fight that um, this fight determined whether women's boxing was going to be in the Olympic Games or not, so it was a huge pressure fight. Mm. Um, but what a position to be in, um, you know, petitioning for women's boxing that they have a right. Uh, thankfully, they, they passed it after that fight, and uh, women's boxing is in the Olympic Games now to stay. Um, but there was definitely a lot of battles and a lot of struggles, and it wasn't an easy path. 
London 2012 was the pinnacle of Katie's amateur career. The gold medal fight against Russia's Sofia Ochigava went the distance. Four rounds of controlled aggression, the culmination of years of training. Katie danced, jabbed and weaved her way to glory and into the hearts of an adoring nation. She'd rewritten the rules of the game, making history as the first woman to win an Olympic gold in female lightweight boxing. No wonder that medal has such pride of place in Katie's makeshift trophy room back at home in Bray. This is the pinnacle of my amateur yeah. career. That's, that's something that I, I dreamed of, as I said, since I was 10 or 11 years yeah. of age. And there wasn't a day that went by where I didn't dream of winning yeah. that, that gold medal. They're heavy, so, aren't they? They are very heavy. Yeah. You should try it on. Yeah. <laughs> I think for worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not worthy. I was never going to be a yeah, contender. Yeah. She'd rolled with the punches, changing attitudes and fighting chauvinism and discrimination along the way. But her greatest challenge was yet to come. She's beaten. Katie Taylor is beaten. It's very cruel to have to ask a fighter to sum up their feelings of obvious disappointment, but Katie, give me a reaction. Break it out, fan it out. Yeah. Split it up. I always wanted to be a boxer because it made me feel more alive than anything else I tried. This is what you call the shed? Yeah, right? so this is where I train pretty much all the time when, when I'm home for the few weeks. It's very unglamorous. So. I was say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, very, it's, it's very derelict, but this is exactly this is where all the fights are won. Like Come on shed. in. <laughs> this is it. Wow. Yeah. Lights, yeah. camera, action. <laughs> <laughs> Hard work, sweat and tears in here. <laughs> Was it yeah. Muhammad Ali once said? Yeah, I actually had a poster of my wall growing up, uh, my bedroom wall. Everyone else had like boy band posters. I had a Muhammad Ali uh, poster on my <laughs> wall and, uh, with the quote that you know, the fight is won or lost, far away from witnesses behind the lines in the gym, long before I danced under those lights. Yeah. And that's what, exactly what it's all about, the, the hard work and the yeah. fights are won in here when nobody's watching. And this is all you need? This is all I need, the boxing bag, all the weights, the sledge. When you say the sledge, this is, what I'll is show, the sledge? I'll show you what it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty heavy, actually, it's, you're to finish it off. Oh, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, no, I just nearly killed you right there. <laughs> yeah. So. Do you want to have a go? No. <laughs> Speak to a fighter like Katie and they'll tell you it's the training they love most. The hours spent honing their craft, the footwork, the hand speed, the religious solitude. But boxing isn't Katie's only devotion. Her faith is the other big constant in her life. Your faith is really important to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably the most important part about who I am, really. I've, I grew up in a Christian household and um, I went to church every Sunday. I, I grew up knowing that God had a great plan for my life. And mm. You've got Psalm 18. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, jacket. and in your shorts? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Psalm 18 is my, my favourite verse, I think. Uh, I read that psalm now before every single one of my fights and it just became a mantra for me, really. It is God who arms you with strength and makes my way perfect. 
You make my feet like the feet of a deer. You train my hands for battle. Some arms can bend the bow bronze. You give me your shield of victory, and you stoop down to make me great. For Katie, her faith is what got her through one of her darkest chapters. In 2016, just months before the Rio Olympics, Katie's dad separated from her mum and left the family. Peter, who'd been alongside her daughter every step of the journey, was no longer in her corner. Dealing a devastating blow to Katie's confidence and her pursuit of a second Olympic gold. She's beaten. Katie Taylor is beaten and out of the Olympic Games. That's it, it's very disappointing. Man. It's been a very, very tough year. My dad was obviously um, my coach ever since I started boxing as a 10 year old. We've spent every single day together. Mm. We shared many great moments together, um, getting ready for big fights and big competitions. And we were definitely a great team, that's for sure. But unfortunately, he stepped away from the family and. Uh, I'm, I'm actually in a good place at the moment. I'm just I, every mm. time I bring it up, I, I get a, you know a, a small bit um, emotional. But just a breakdown of the relationship. Um, there's a huge breakdown of the relationship, obviously, and um, that just brought, I guess, so much heartache. And, and mm. I guess I just couldn't really focus and was really, really difficult for me. And that, you know, you never know what, what life's gonna throw at you sometimes, the ups and downs of life. I mean, you, you have the, the highs of, of London and then the real lows of, of Rio. The, that was the toughest time in my career, but personally it was, it was, it was absolutely ha heartbreaking as well. And, um, and that's life really, yeah. And you were undefeated for five years. You then yeah. what, lost three of the next sort of six. Yeah, that's right. Six, um, 2016 was was the lowest point of my career. That's for sure. I was going into these competitions um, probably unprepared and trying to do it all on my own and, and trying to, to trust other coaches to do it as well. And I just didn't have the same trust as, as I did um, when my dad was obviously coaching me and just trying to, to to get me my head together as well before these competitions was, was really really tough. You got through it though. Yeah. You got that's through right, it. Yeah. You are where you are today. Yeah as a result That's of the exactly. downs as well as the ups, yeah. right? It's this that makes Katie's well, journey so special. She's lunging forward. Let's do it. She's not defined by how many times she's won, but rather how she's fought back from adversity. <laughs> After Rio, found a new coach. Last night. Professional and rediscovered her love of boxing. If, if Rio was the sort of you know the, the depth of yeah. despair, what happened next? Yeah, I mean, I mean, life is about mountain tops and valleys, and mm. it's great being on top of the mountain. But um, you know, the valleys are the place that, that mature you, and uh, mm. that's where a character is built as well. And um, I knew that after the Rio Olympics, that I needed to, to, to change something. My career was going um, downhill very, very fast. I think at the time, I, I just wasn't enjoying me boxing at all. Mm. It was a chore for me to, to go train. And um, I, I, I knew I wasn't boxing well. And then when, the minute I went over to Ross, he just fueled the fire back at me again. I started mm. to enjoy me boxing again. And I loved the train. I loved it. His philosophy of training as well. He's a real old school school guy. Just it, it's mm. all about hard work, getting the rounds of sparring and the road work, and um, I just loved all of that. Having rekindled her passion for the sport, she then turned to manager Brian Peters, who, at lunch with Katie and her friends, talked about the journey so far. But like you, you gotta say, even I suppose then where you see then Katie and where you are now, do you know what you went know, through yeah. and, and the when you see and the highs and lows of it, it's, it's you see that sometimes that needs to happen though. Mm. Yeah. 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 To really but, uh, then appreciate yeah. it and stuff like that. It builds character, builds, <laughs> yeah, builds a lot of. Yeah. As bad as it is, time and then you then look then how far you can Yeah. ranks. 14 wins in three years, six knockouts, no defeats. The undisputed lightweight world champion. You know, 
Katie's still learning, only 14 fights. So like this. I'm, I am learning as a world champion, exactly. which is the learning. difference. I love that. Yeah. I'm learning as a world champion. Learning as a world champion and getting, it's just brilliant. You know, and getting properly looked after for doing it as you, as you mm. do your apprenticeships. Back in top form, Katie was now one fight away from the zenith of women's world boxing. A memorable night in New York. And the new up. WBA lightweight champion of the world. Break it out, fan it out. Yeah. yeah. Split it up. Hardly cut it off. Can someone These are two warriors. Incredible domination as their story continues to grow. My ultimate goal is to be the greatest female boxer of my generation and to build a bigger platform for the next female fighters as well. In June 2019, at the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Gardens in New York, Katie faced arguably her greatest challenge to date. For anyone who thought this was going to be an easy night for Katie Taylor, they were mistaken. Delphine Persoon of Belgium, vastly more experienced and the holder of the WBC World Cup. Just terrific. Just trying to get to the finish. The fight was brutal. Neither woman took a step back. Taylor trying to stay on her feet. Trading blows for 10 grueling rounds in a fight described by many as the best they've ever seen. The bell. Swinging wildly, and that will do it. After a hotly disputed points decision, Katie came out on top. And now the undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Katie! Becoming one of only seven boxers in history, male or female, to hold all four major titles. I just I knew it was going to be uh, the toughest fight in my career, but um, it was definitely a grueling, and grueling fight. I was definitely it wasn't my best performance, that's for sure. But mm. I think I dug deep, and um, I think I found a way to win. And that's what that's what, that's what great champions do. Really, when they're not at their best on the night, they, they find a way to win. And, um, there was definitely a lot of controversy and stuff after the fight as well. Yeah, the criticism uh, yeah, the, exactly. the, about the result yeah, affected yeah. me. Does that upset you? I mean, that must upset you, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think that's part and parcel of it as well. I mean, you're, you're going to be in line for criticism sometimes. And it was a really tough fight. It could have went either way. You can't call a fight like that a robbery or a bad decision. But it was, it was a fantastic fight. And um, it's great to be in a fight of the year contender yeah. in Madison Square Garden um, and, and come out victorious. He is another right lands on Taylor. Her soul giving Katie Taylor the toughest battle she's seen in her professional career. I saw your face yeah. after that last yeah. fight. Priscilla's face is a lot more than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Okay. I'm> <laughs> but you were battered. Yeah, I was. My my face is out to here after mm. you know after the fight, and I had stitches on my head as mm. well. But you know that's professional boxing, and you really are, as I said, putting your body in the line every time you step into that ring. It it is um, a tough sport. Mm. It's not for the faint heart, that's for sure. Mm. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I am prepared for that. I, I, I am conditioned for that, so that, for that, for those sort of battles. That might have been the best punch of the fight for either fighter to land it for Katie Taylor. Nonetheless, she is now the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Let's talk about your legacy because you are a living legend. I mean, this is what you've achieved has been absolutely remarkable, and the impact that you have had not just on women's boxing but women's sport as a whole yeah. is unbelievable. You are a real mm. pioneer. Do you feel that, and do you feel a responsibility? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I love that responsibility. I love the fact that I can have a positive influence on, on young girls coming up and be a great example to them. And um, 
and I really feel like um, you know it has had a, a great influence on this nation as well, which is which is a great feeling to have. And I, I told you before that even every single boxing club in the whole country is just packed with female boxers now. And and when I started boxing, I I, I seem I feel I, I felt like I was the only kind of female boxer around. So uh, to have our, um, you know a lot of girls looking up to you and. Uh, to see so much talent coming up is probably the most satisfying part about this journey. Down at the local boxing club, Katie's legacy is already paying dividends. Boys and girls putting in the hard yards, inspired by Katie's journey. Champions in the making. How are you? Hi. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Are you Tegan? You're the Irish champion? Yeah. I know all about you. You're fantastic, you're amazing. Oh, you. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah. Can I take her on the pads? Yeah. Yeah? Can I take her on the pads? Yeah? <laughs> One, two, left hook. Brilliant. That's amazing. Brilliant. Well, your speed is amazing, your power Thank is you. amazing, your footwork is phenomenal. Thanks so much. All you have to do is just keep going, keep training hard, and I think you're going to be one of the best ever. Oh, Tegan, thanks really, so much. absolutely. This year, one of the best talents I've ever seen, and that's uh, that's thank genuine. You. Don't ever give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks so uh, much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's brilliant, isn't she? Isn't she amazing? <laughs> what does it feel like to be in a club like this, watching? Young girls as well as young boys. I mean, this, this didn't happen when you were a kid. This right? didn't happen, but this this is just pure talent I right hear. Yeah. The passion that they all have for this for the game is absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, just seen so many girls here. Tegan bursts into tears when you do thing. Yeah. I mean, you're the hero. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we talked about you know that being a responsibility to a yeah. certain extent, which yeah. I get. But when you walk into a club like this and you see that raw emotion. That must make you feel good, doesn't it? That's, that's what, exactly what it's all about. I mean, yeah. Katie Taylor has transformed women's sport, made history as a boxer and inspired a nation. But she's far from throwing in the towel just yet. I'm definitely going to step out of the sport at the right time, but mm. I've got plenty of years left in me. I'm not even thinking about retirement yet, and um, I am the undisputed champion, but I feel like I'm only getting started, really. Um, unfortunately for my family, I think they'd love to see me hanging up with the, the gloves as well. They're, they're nerves to be gone, I think, before every single fight, but um, I feel like I'm, 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 you know, I'm very, very fresh, and there's so many big fights out there for me, and I absolutely love my job. I love mm. what I do. I love. Mm. I love uh, getting into this ring and performing, and I feel at home in this ring, so why hang up the gloves when there's so mm. much more to achieve? A talent for boxing compelled Katie to get into the ring as a child, but it's her determination, her faith, and her humility that have made her journey truly extraordinary. A small town girl who picked up a pair of boxing gloves and conquered the world.